Hello guys, welcome to ECTP Presents Tech Beyond episode. In this episode, I'll show you guys how you can implement a distributed switch in your VMware environment. And I'll guide you to step-by-step -step process how you can implement it. So I'm going to share my screen and I'll show you step-by-step -step everything. All right, so this is the environment I have here. And also, the first I'll show you create a uh, created distributed switch. How, that means what how you can create a distributed switch, and then add host to the distributed switch. So after you create the distributed switch, you need to add your host, right? So that's what I show you on the second steps, and also create a distributed port group, um, and then configure the VM kernel for iSCSI, SAN, and vMotion. And also uh, I'll show you how to create a um, um, VM network distributed port port group. And and after whenever you completed all those things, that means your uh, distributed switch deployment is done. But the five and six steps I'll show you actually. If in your uh, like existing environment you have a distributed switch with maybe fifty SXA host, and out of fifty maybe three of them you want to remove from the distributed switch, how are you gonna do that? That's what I'm going to show you on the step number five. And also, I'll show you how to take a backup of your distributed switch configuration. And also, in case of any incident happen, like by mistake, you remove something, you, you just disconfigure uh, some, um, you, you just somehow, you just remove some port group or maybe some host or something happen with your existing distributed uh, switch or port group then how are you going to restore it from the uh, previous uh, st like state uh, through the distributed switch backup. So I'll show you on this step. And let's get started with the final implementation. So this is the host I have. I'm just giving an example with three ESXi hosts. So I have a three ESXi host here. And how I get this 3SXI host, actually, basically, I don't have physical. This is my nested SXI. And if you want to learn how you can implement the nested SXI environment, I have a separate video for that. And also, I have a separate video for uh, how to implement BSM cluster. Uh, that's also in a covered in a separate video. So in this video, I'm going to focus only for and distributed switch implementation. Right now, if you see, if I click this host, the host number one in a Virginia data center, uh, you're gonna see I have only standard switch zero. It, it's attached with two NIC card. If you click here, you're gonna see, and also a simple VM network port group, virtual machine, that means virtual machine port group, right? And I don't have any other switch here. And if you look at how many physical NIC are attached with this machine, this XI, if you click here, you gonna see all the available uh, BM NIC, that is BM port. So two is already used for standard switch, which is B switch number zero. And actually by default, I get it because when I configure the SXI, I added these two for NIC teaming and for redundancy. And rest four is empty. It's not used yet. So the reason I make it empty or I keep it, I highly recommend all of you guys, if you want to have a plan to implement a structured BMO recommended uh, data center, BMO data center, and uh, I'll highly recommend to have each and every hot at least minimum, at mm -hmm. least minimum uh, three SXI, uh, two, uh, three SXI host. Uh, Sorry, three, uh, sorry, six NICR, six NICR, at least six NICR in each, each host. But if you have more than that, it's completely fine. If you have less than that, still you can work. But flexibility wise, I highly recommend to have four dedicated uh, port group, like the uh, network adapter um, for distributed switch. So each and every host has the same kind of configuration here. You see here, I just select the host and configuration, then the physical adapter. And if you want to see uh, virtual switch, you're gonna see the management network and the VM network, which is by default I get it when I add this one. And if you can look at the configuration of this, 
like Nick theming. So you can go this three dot and go to the edit settings. Uh, and actually this is for the IP address. And you have to go here, edit settings, and you're gonna see the theming and failover. So now both are in a Nick theming. So that means both are active. You can do active and standby. Also, you can do that. That's not an issue. That's not an issue. You can do like this also. When you now you select it, you see it's showing only one. That means what? If for some reason this one is goes bad, this one will be active. Will act as a active. That's what it means. So in the meantime, the, your 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 host will be active. Your uh, the EMSN will be active, but you, uh, so whatever the bad nick card or something happened with this nick card, you have time to replace it. <sighs> so that, that's how my all the three ESXi host is configured. So each and every one I have physical, uh, four physical nick card uh, is adapter is free, so I can use it. And also I'm gonna show you the BM panel adapter. You see here, management has a BM panel adapter because when I configure the SXA host, by default I get it. So for BM or management, just remember one thing, for BM or management, you need to have a BM kernel. And whenever it comes to a BM kernel point, that means you need a separate IP address for it. So there is some other requirements for BM kernel, like when you need the BM kernel actually. So for management, definitely you need, you need to configure BM kernel, which is by default is gonna be configured. And you don't know actually, but uh, you have a BM kernel, right? Because by default you get it. But the another, another scenario is like, when you um, when you need a BM kernel adapter. So if you want to have a B-motion configuration, B-motion means to move the machine from one host to another, that's called a B-motion. So for B-motion, you don't need to have a cluster. Without cluster, you can implement B-motion, but the only one requirement is for the B-motion, you have to have it. You have to have a storage B-motion or maybe B-motion both together you can configure. But the requirement is you have to have a BM kernel for that B-motion. So you can enable BM kernel on the same BMK0, but it's gonna be double traffic, like management traffic and BM B-motion traffic to one channel, which is not recommended. That's why I all the, all the time recommend create a separate BM kernel for group for B-motion. And also not only that, if you want to add your shared storage, your shared storage with your VMware environment, if you want to add your SAN storage, iSCSI SAN storage with your environment, you need to have a separate BM kernel. And if you, so whenever you say, I said, you have to have you have to have a separate BM kernel port group for your iSCSI SAN. That means you need a separate IP address also. And and also, if you want to configure a B SAN virtual SAN, you need to have a separate BM kernel adapter. And each and every VM kernel adapter you got to have some uh, like dedicated or uh, or maybe multiple uh, NIC card. So B motion support any kind of configuration for the. Uh, uh, like any kind of teaming, like one NIC card or multiple NIC card. And, and but exceptionally, um, iSCSI SAN like cannot support multiple NIC card. So you have to have one NIC card. So I'm, I'm going to show you practically how you can implement it. Let's get started. So I have, you already knows, I have a available physical NIC card, like four NIC card available for each or your success host. And now I will show you actually how you're gonna create a distributor switch. Let's create a distributor switch. I have some distributor switch here. I'm not going to work with this. I'm going to show you a brand new distributor switch. So it's pretty easy. This is the host and cluster view. This is a um, uh, VMs and templates view. And this is a storage view. This is a network view. So you have to go to the network view and then on the data center, each data center you can have, you can have multiple um, distributed port group, but distributed port group, uh, distributed switch support under the un under one data center. If you have a separate data center, then you have to apply another distributed switch that's not going to support to the other data center. So the distributed switch should be created under the data center, not under the cluster. 
Under the data center, you can have multiple clusters. And if you have a one distributed switch under one data center, you can uh, you can use that distributed switch for all kind of cluster and all kind of host under this data center. So let, let's, let's get started with this, how to create a distributed switch. So just simply right click on your data center name and then you can say distributed switch, new distributed switch and provide a name. So I can say uh, DV, DV switch nested, just, it's just remind me this is my nested distributed switch. But it not means that you have to have the same thing. It's up to you what should be the name. Click next. And then it's going to ask you which compatible version you want. So by default, since I am using 6.7 uh, ESXi, that's why it's recommending me uh, 6.60 ESXi, 6.7 and later, or maybe 6.5 later. So which which um, one you're supposed to select, which version, so which version you're supposed to select. It depends on you. If you think your environment has a 6.5 ESXi, 6.0 ESXi, in that case, you can go with this. Then your distributed switch is going to be like compatible with any kind of ESXi. But if you think, okay, I don't have any 6.0 ESXi in my environment, or I don't have any 6.5 in my environment, I have 6.7 and 7 ESXi and also 8 ESXi. In that case, you can just go with this. Click next. And then configuration. So how many uplinks? Uplinks means how many NIC card, physical NIC card you want to add with the distributed switch. It's up to you. And it's not mean that you say, for example, by default, it comes four uplink, right? Four uplink means four dedicated physical NIC card, right? Not NIC card actually, it's physical port. Dedicated physical port for you need to add. And it's not mean that all of them you have to connect. If you connect, say for example, one, you have three hosts. Out of three hosts, two of them has a four port, physical port you have available, and another server has a two port available. You can add just only two, that's fine. That's not an issue. Or you can increase it if you have a multiple port group and if you have like physical port. And also in here, it's a uh, default port group. So under the distributed switch, you'll be able to create a separate, separate distributed port. Um, so it's not mandatory, you have to have right away, or you can create it and you can change the name if you want, whatever you want, and, or if you don't want, you can create it later on for group. I'm going to uncheck it, I, I'll create it after I deploy the distributed switch. Click next and finish. So my distributed switch is already implemented. So now, sorry, not this one, uh, nested this one. So now I don't have any port group. I can create a multiple port group based on my network. So right click on it. And then now I'm going to show you actually how to create a port group. So port creation, creating a port group is pretty simple. Right click on the distributed switch. And then for the first option, distributed port group, new distributed port group, and you can say, anything, any name. If you have a billion, mention the billion. If you don't have billion, just mention, okay, something else or your production or something. It's up to you, up to your organization standard. So I say, I can say, okay, um, production, distributed port group, production, BM, BM net, and okay, click next. And also you can mention which subnet is using just for remind you, because if you have a multi subnet in your environment, say 30, 40, 50 subnet, you're dealing with it. In that case, you can mention the VLAN or VLAN ID. You can say V something. If it is say, for example, 30 number VLAN, V30, it's up to you. And also you can add the, maybe the IT subnet, maybe say for example, 1.168.1.0, mine is zero. And it's 24 subnet I can have. I can I cannot use slash because slash is not support here. I said hyphen 24, that means it's a 20, uh, 24 subnet and click next. And how many numbers of ports you want? By default is gonna be eight. You can increase it to 16, 32, 64, up to you. Say for example, 32. And then VLAN ID, if you are not using any VLAN specific IPA ID, then you don't need to just say none and say click next and finish. And now, if you want to create, for example, distributed port group with, um, I can I have a VLAN called uh, VLAN. 
uh, it's a Virginia, and also the VLAN ID is, so I can have actually VLAN uh, AD, VA, I have it. So if you don't have it, how are you gonna get it actually? If you don't understand what is the VLAN, actually this VLAN is gonna be provided by your network team. You network team gonna say, okay, this is your subnet and this is the VLAN ID. So either one you can have it. So for example, this one is 172.60. Uh, say zero dot zero slash no as uh, slash not support hyphen twenty four. I'm just giving an example, nothing else. I'm just giving an example. Mm -hmm. So okay, the same thing. 32, 16, whatever you want. And then this one, I'm gonna use the VLAN. So again, don't be confused how you're gonna get the VLAN. Your network team will provide the VLAN number. So in this case, I am using VLAN number AD. I just, the reason I'm showing you, if you have a VLAN, how you're gonna assign it. That's why I'm just showing you. Click next and finish. So, so far two distributed for port group we have created and all these two port group is for what? This two port group is for? These two port group is for what? For virtual machine traffic. And now we're gonna create for Bmotion, iSCSISM, and also we're gonna create for um, Bmotion, iSCSISM, Bmotion, iSCSISM, and mm -hmm. we're gonna create it for um, something else. All right, so um, I have so far created two, right? It's a virtual machine port group. It's a virtual machine port group. But now I need to create some port, a port group for Bmotion, iSCSISM, and also for BSAN. And if you use, like right now, it's pretty simple for me because my both host, like all three hosts is using the same subnet. So, but if your host is using different, different, this one is one subnet, this one is different subnet. In that case, you have to create two from each subnet. So I'm going to show you how you're gonna create. If you, uh, so for this one, I have, you see the IP number 120, 1.120, but if it is not one or two, if it is 172, one something like that, then you have to create one for this, one for other one for Bmotion and same thing for uh, SCSIS and for apps. If you have different, different host configured with different, different subnet. But if you have all the host is in the same subnet, then you can create Bmotion also in the same subnet. That's not an issue. Or you can have in a different, if you can have access, that's not a problem. Like like on your network team supposed to create a, uh, what is called? Um, your network team supposed to create of um, billion tagging or something like that. All right, so I'm going to show you how now we're gonna create a VM kernel port group. But before I do that, we have to create a first simple some port group. So you can say the motion, the motion for which one you can say prod. Or, or the IP address, so that's how we know. So if you have a multiple ESXA host in this subnet, you can use this one as for the motion configuration. Zero hyphen 24, just for remind you, it's not mandatory. If this is just only Bmotion, that's also work if you can remember. Click next and then I say, 64 and VLAN, no VLAN, click next and finish. Okay, so it, so now this one is a simple port group like this one. But when I gonna add it here, BM kernel, then it's gonna be a BM kernel. But it's mandatory, you have to have a BM kernel. So I didn't add the BM kernel yet. I'm just simply creating a port group. Add distributed group, new. Okay, now 
c'est sain, ASCADI. ASCADI, sain, for 192.168.1.0.24. It's up to you. If you don't want like this, you can do something else. And next, and finish. And right click on it. Distribute new support group. I can say BSEN. BSEN hyphen 192.168.1. Um, wonder what? Zero, right? Hyphen 24. Next. I'm just. You can change it anytime later on, so you can up, 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 like increase the port number. So it's 16 or maybe 32, it doesn't matter. And I'm not using any VLAN for this one. Click next and finish. And also, just to give you an example, if you have host in different subnet, for example, like this, distributed per group, and you can, uh, for the motion, I schedule send everything you have to create separate again. So B send, you can say B motion hyphen, say for example, 172.116.0.0 hyphen 24. If it is the case, and click next and say 32. And if you have a VLAN, now this one I have a VLAN, VLAN number 80. This is how you want to do for if you have a multi subnet with if you ESX in a different subnet, think about my ESX, one of the ESX is in this subnet. In that case, I have to do like this. Okay. So we, so far we created uh, lots of port group. Now uh, let's add a host. How you can add the host? Just right click on the distributed switch and you see add host. And next, click here. Now you can implement all the ESXA host under the same data center. But I'm just going to apply only three of the hosts. So I can select. If you want all of them, then just check mark here. All of them will be uh, checked. So this three I'm going to add. Click next, click next. And then I have to send you remember when I created this switch, it has a total of four uplink. So each and every uplink I have to add a new curve. So let's, as you see here, first zero and one is already used with standard switch when we configure the management, but the rest of them are empty, right? So let's start to add BM NIC two as the uplink number one, uplink number one. And then is in C in the, in the below, it shows apply this uplink assignment to the rest of the host. So if you select 50 SX host at the same time, and if you say, okay, add, is going to add all 50 together, but make sure all of them have the same NIC card is empty. Okay. Okay, see here, I just sign assign for BA host 01. You see this one automatically in here, host number two, NIC number two is already assigned. Host number three, NIC, NIC number two is already assigned, which is automatically when I check mark on the options. So let's add the NIC number three as a uplink number two. And also I'm going to apply for all other hosts. It's okay. It's going to be add all the all of the host. And then number four, sign uplink, uplink number three. Oh, sorry. I'm going to delete it because I forget to check mark. Unassign. Okay. Again, assign it. Assign uplink number three and make sure you have check mark. Otherwise you have to do individually which is a lot of work, right? But right now I have three, it's not that much work, but if you have a 50 selected, then it's too much work, right? Individually doing, click okay, okay. And nick num yeah, BM nick number five, assign as the applet number four and make sure check mark here and okay. So now everything is already assigned, you see here. And if you look at here, look, see, number two, it's already assigned, number one already assigned and click next and next. And next and finish. Done. It's done. So now if you come here, uh, if you come, you see distributor switch. 
Now this reverse switch is here, but none of them is applied. It's just NIC card is added. So which one you want for BM traffic? Which one you want for B-motion? Which one you want for, um, here's four NIC card. So you can assign for iSCSI. So let's configure the BM kernel. And if you want to configure the BM kernel, make sure you have to assign an IP address. If you look at here, I the, I, the management network is 120 for this one, management is 123. So I have available 121, 122. So 121 and I can assign for the motion, 122 I can assign for uh, iSCSI on the host number one. So host number two, my IP number is 23. So 24 and 25, I can assign for Vmotion and iSCSI. And host number three, my management IP address is 126. So 127 and 128, I can assign for Vmotion and uh, iSCSI. And what are you going to do with the BSEN? So BSEN, I don't have available empty IP address in between. So we can go for after 28. So say 29 for host number one, BSEN for BSEN, BM kernel. 129 for host number one, for host number two, uh, 30, and maybe host number three is 31. It's up to you. Depends on which IP. It's not mean that you have to have a sequence. If you have a, if you can keep the sequence, it will help you to understand. But if you don't have available IPs on in a sequence or in a series, you can go for any any available IP. That's fine, completely okay. All right, so let's go uh, on the distributor switch. So say for example, Bmotion, right? So I'm going to configure the Bmotion, this one. Right click on it. So you can say add BM kernel adapter. So before I actually do the Bmotion, let's get started with the iSCSI SAM. Right click, add a BM kernel adapter, click next. Okay, sorry, attach, host. So I'm gonna attach all three hosts together. Okay, click next. And MTU, uh, get MTU switch. 1500 is by default in 6.7, but for seven and eight ESXi or base center, the the um, MTU is changed. It's 9,000, 9, which is a jumbo frame. But anyway, you don't need to change anything here. And for also for uh, iSCSI SAN, you don't need to select anything from here. Just leave it like this. So, so far I did nothing here, right? Click next and assign an IP address. So the first host, BSEN, I'm gonna use 192.168.1.21 and 255.255.255.0. And then the host number two is gonna, is gonna uh, give me options if I want the sequence. So I know I have 22 is available, right? No, not 22 actually. The host number two, IP is 23, so 24 will be, because 21 and then 22, I'm gonna use for Bmotion. Then 23 is using the management, right? We already sent for management 23. So that's the 24 I assigned for the host number two, send, uh, I scale send. And host, this one is 27, because 26 is host number three management. Okay, submit autofill. That's all done. And BM kernel configuration, IP address is 192.168.1.1, which is default gateway, right? Click next and finish. So I added, I configured, I can say now I, I can I need to configure the Bmotion, right? So right click on it, right click on it, and then say add a BM kernel adapter, add attach, okay, next. And then this one is for Bmotion. So if you say Bmotion, you can use the Bmotion and you can use the Bmotion and, and also if you want to use the, the same beam kind adapter for BSEN, you can do that here also. But you need to, so then that, that means you have for Bmotion and the BSEN, you're gonna use the same, what? You're gonna same channel with just only one IP, right? Bmotion IP and BSN IP the same because you're using both of them in the same channel, right? But if you want to create a separate BSN, in that case, don't do that. 
And also, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm highly recommending you to have a separate. The only thing is you need to have a separate IP address. And if you think you're not using this BM kernel for multi-purpose, in that case, also you can go for this one, BM motion. So that means all, the, all these are gray out. So either way you can go. Default, be motion like this, or maybe the other way. So now use the IP address, okay? 192.168.1.122, right? Sorry, or just only 22, right? And then 25, and then this one is 28, okay. How I said 25? Because 26 is the IP address of this one. And 26, 26 is the IP address of host, host number three management. And 27 is for iSCSI. Now 28 I assign for a B motion. And subject mask 255.255.255.0. If you're confused with this, it's nothing. It just follow your IP spreadsheet. That's it. I know what I'm doing. That's why I'm just uh, assigning here. If you're confused with this, you can just follow your IP spreadsheet, which one you are assigning for what. So you should have uh, in front of you, you should have your IP spreadsheet, mark it for Bmotion, mark it for iSCSI. Ahead of time, assigning this IP, you should have your plan. So just follow your plan and assign it. That's it. And BM kernel and 192.168.1.1. This is default gateway, click next and finish. So this is also done. Now, what are you gonna do? Bmotion is done, BCN, right? BCN configurations. If you want to have a BCN separate IP address, you can do that, add, you can say, add BM kernel adapter, separate BM kernel, add uh, this, okay, okay. So this is for BCN only, right? Click next and then use the IP address. So you know, we already assign like from 20 to 28 already assigned for uh, management, Bmotion, iSCSI, right? For all three hosts, total nine IPs we already use. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 28, and 29. Total nine, uh, oh, 29 or 28. So this is 26, 27, 28, okay. Three, 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 total nine, it should be nine, right? And it started from 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, yes, nine, 28, nine. And now we can start from 29, so 10, sorry, not 10, 192.168.1.29. So I always recommend to have in front of you, to have your IPM, like IP address management spreadsheet or IP address management uh, app, like application or something. So make sure you are assigning the right IP address, which is available. 30, then 31, that's fine. Subject mask 255.255.255.0. Don't be confused with this IP, it's your IP. Like you're gonna get it from your network team or maybe you'll have your uh, IP spreadsheet or maybe IP uh, IPM application. So from there you can just assign. Okay. So Bison also I assigned. Okay. So now if you go here, look at here. Everything is configured, right? Everything is configured. Everything is configured. So what are you gonna do? So let's say right click on it, create a new virtual machine. Oh, sorry. Another thing I need to show you, which is now if you select this one, iSCSN is using all four NIC card. Bmotion using all four, four NIC card. This one using all four NIC card, right? But I don't want because why I don't want iSCSN never support multiple NIC card. You have to use any one of the NIC card. So how are you gonna do that? You cannot do it from here. So to change it, you have to go to the standard switch. Standard switch, you can you can you can change it here. You can change the 
you can change it from here for the standard switch, right? You click edit and you can go to the theming and failover. You can change the network card. But for distributed switch, you cannot do from here. You have to go to the network options and then select your distributed switch or iSCSI send, right? So this one, right click on it, go to the edge option. And you see here, theming and failover. All four is here, but I'm going to use only number one for and go down, standby. Even though you're going to use standby, go down like this. Click OK. And now for B motion, right click on it, edit settings, theming and failover. This is called Nick theming. So I'm also showing you how you're going to configure Nick theming. So this is what active all four ports is active that means all the traffics uh the traffic for b motion sometimes is go through this one sometimes go to this one sometimes go to this one it depends and but if you say okay i don't want this one because this one is dedicated for let's move this one unused because this one completely dedicatedly used for iSCSI send right and then host uh, billion number two sorry uh, uplink number two which is the nick number two you're going to use it here, but and three and four, you're not going to use, <clears throat> sorry, maybe for uh, other, other use. So you can just move them. You can just move them here. Number four, move them as a standby. So if something goes wrong with this one, a B motion can support multiple knee cut. So if this one goes down, you can use this. Or maybe you can have number three here too, like this. It's up to you how you're going to configure it, right? And also, if your manager or if your uh, organization has some recommendation, you can follow that and click OK. This is the Nick theming configuration. OK. So for SAM, right click on it. You can say edit settings. Now, theming failover. You can say, OK, I don't want one in, uh, one here, one dedic dedicatedly used for. Uh, send and then for number three, maybe you can keep number three and two. You can make make it as a okay. The standby two and four and number three you want to use for your uh, B send. Click okay. So all are configured. Now we're gonna see how it look like. If you come back here, any one of the host, any one of the host, if you come back, you're gonna see here, if you select this one, see, only one. This one, B-Motion, only one. As case, only one. And maybe two of them is the um, standby, right? That's why it's not showing here. And phone number is not nothing here. And say, let's say we're gonna create a VM just for an example, new. Test VM, we're gonna create a test VM. You can say test, click next, click next, and and and, and click next, click next, click next. Okay, if five. Megabyte, hundred megabyte. I, the reason is I don't have enough space. This is I'm using local storage. I don't have the share storage attached yet. Just to show you the sample. Okay, I click next and finish. So I have a test machine here, virtual machine, and now go to edit options and use one of the distributor switch port group. So which one you want? Say for example, you want this one, not be motion production BM net, virtual machine network. Okay, I'll click okay. So now if you go here, you're gonna see production BM net and it has a one virtual machine. And if you click this one, this one is using all four. But do you want all four? If you don't want, then you go here for this one, the production billion, right? So for the virtual machine. So go to the area options and teaming and failover. So make sure all two and three go down, down, down. No, sorry, here. 
and one definitely go all the way down and so number four is active and rest two will be your standby click okay or you can have all three in here as active that's not a matter but but we use this one for motion. this one for this and so that's why i said okay just keep keep them as a standby when it's needed that's a that's a good idea okay now if you come back here you're gonna see the test no not the test any one of the host if you're gonna see uh this one if you select this one this one is using only one nick card but the other two is uh in a standby mode if something goes wrong with this nick card with this nick card then automatically one of them from there will be active or both of them will be active actually because both of them are standby okay so this is the uh this switch configuration which we uh based on our target we configured all this right so now uh remove the host from the distributed port group or switch and on the, and also i'm going to show you how to take a backup let's say how to take a backup right, right uh, go to the network settings and go to the distributor switch right click on it and then say uh, settings and you can say export configuration and it's going to ask you distributor switch and all port groups yes you can have some description click ok and now it's backup you can rename it now it's backup one uh, say for example based on this this is this i can say backup this one uh, is downloaded on my download folder download and i can say wire is downloaded This computer download. This is the download, right? Oh, sorry, I checked if on the wrong wrong folder. Okay, so I can just rename it. I can say this message website backup just to remember. Okay, so I have the backup now. What I can do, say for example, I'm going to remove. How are we going to remove them? So for removing them. From you can you can just say delete. You cannot do that. So de remove so for removing. You have to just select okay, remove, remove, and you can say remove. Okay, and also you see here BM because you can with now this this test BM associated with the one port group so you have to remove that one from the if you have a, some association you cannot remove it so you can say just move to any other bm local network not distributed switch it's standard, this is a standard switch port group so i just removed the distributed switch port group from this bm so now you see it's not there and just expand it current bm kernel remove Remove and then remove, remove. Almost everything is removed, right? Now go go back, come here and then say right click, delete. Yes. One thirty is in use, right? One thirty is in use. Okay, let's come back here. If if this one is used, then you cannot delete it. Okay. So this one is used. 
come back here. I schedule same, edit settings. So I just remove the Actually, what? Okay. So I have removed it and also I need to remove the host from there. How are you going to remove the host? Right click on it and you can say uh, add and manage host, remove, next, attach, select all of them, click OK, next, next. We switch nested, the resource 130 is in use. Somewhere it's in use, that's why. Your settings. Let's check it out from here. Oh, okay, sorry. So I just remove it from the one host. You have to... Um, Yes, you have to remove them, remove, remove, remove. Okay. All the port group I have removed. Nothing here, nothing here, but still I have, that's why I'm not able to delete it, right? Here. So BM kernel here, remove, yes. And then BM kernel here, here, remove, yes, remove. And then this one, remove and remove. So it's fresh. Okay, everything is now. Nothing here, right? So let's go, go back to the display switch. Right click, and manage host, remove host, next, attach. So if you want only one host removed, then one host. If you want so all of them, click OK, and next, and next, and finish. So all of them is gone. If so now if you go back here, you're not gonna see anything here. See, now it's only a standard switch. Distributed switch is not there anymore. And click here, say for example, I'm going to delete the all, whole distributed switch, yes. It's gone, it's gone. Now, we satisfied this one, and also we already did backup, right? Switch, and now we're gonna do the restore from the backup. So restore from the backup, what, how are we gonna do that? So select the data center, and in here, import distributor switch, browse, and then see this one and say preserve, okay, original, click next, finish. And within short time, you're gonna see, see, it's come back here again. It's come back here again. And now, again, what do you have to do? The same way. You have to assign, you have to add, you see here, come back here, you can see, it's already a host already added, by the NIC card, host already added, we just need to do the BM kernel, that's it. We just need to do the BM kernel, and uh, the BM is there. If you go edit and just select from here, the BM network is there. Just select, say production, and okay, the beam network is there. You see, is there. So only, only the B motion or ISCG, whatever you want, you can just you need just need to add it. That's it. So that's all. 
for today. And I believe you enjoyed this video. And uh, I know this is a long because I have to explain everything there. So it's a long video. Um, So if you think this video is helpful for you, please share with your friends, coworker, your colleague. And if you're new, if you're new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And also don't forget to make some comments because your comments is encouraging me to make more videos for you guys. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in another video.